Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Gillian Nova back here with a new video and today this is going to be my 100th video on YouTube. Well, the 100th video that I consider that I actually put effort into editing. Anyways, for this video, I'm going to do a mukbang, mukbang, hopefully I pronounced that right, and a 100 question Q&A since this is my 100th video. And the food of choice of this video is going to be the self-heating hot pot that I picked up at H Mart. So I go to H Mart pretty often and when Whenever I go there, I always see this. And if you don't know what H Mart is, it's a very organized Korean grocery store here in America, but I'm not too sure if other countries have it too, like in South Korea. Anyways, whenever I go to H Mart, I'm always intrigued by the self-heating hot pot. And now this is gonna be my first time trying it. I was actually inspired to do this type of video due to another small YouTuber. His name is Tyler Tang. I'll have a link to his channel in the description below. But yeah, I always had an idea to do a mukbang and I also wanted to do a Q&A so that you guys could get to know me more. I think it's smart also for viewers to get to know who they're watching to get a better sense of who they are and why they should invest a couple of minutes of their day watching them. So throughout this video, I'm going to be answering some handpicked questions that I found on Google or that people ask me on Instagram. And if you haven't already, Follow me on Instagram, hit that like button down below, and hit that subscribe button. So now let's get this video started. I picked the vegetable self-hitting hot pot because personally, I don't like spicy food. So this was like the only choice that they had. I wish they had a hot pot that had meat inside it that wasn't spicy. So for this video, I'm going to be adding some Vienna sausage so that I could add some more choices when I'm eating the soup. Looking on the back of the hot pot, the nutrition facts, it looks like that the vegetables are 90 calories, and then another set of vegetables are 45 calories. What else does it say here? The tomato flavor hot pot seasoning is 230, and the vermicelli or vermicelli is 90 calories. But I'm also going to be adding the Vienna sausage, and right here it says that it is... 160 calories, so if I add those two together, let me see. So 90 and 90 is 180, then 180 plus 45 is 225, then 230 and 225 is 455, then I'm gonna add this 160 and that is 615. So let's open this up. And then the cooking instructions are right here. It looks like the first step is to remove the items. Then the second step is to add water to the maximum fill-in line and then add cold water. Dang, I need to get cold water. To the very bottom, and then add the, does this say heating pocket? And then put back step two, everything on top of it. And then wait 15 minutes and I think it should be all good. All right, I'll get cold water. All right, so I got a water bottle from my fridge. It should be cold and it feels cold, so. Oh yeah, also I picked up some soju from H Mart. This is 12.5%, so this is gonna be a really chill day. And let's open this bad boy up. I'm just gonna keep the instructions just in case. Oh, it looks like there's some more instructions in the very back. Darn, I, I cut this wrong. Like it says step one and then step five right here. So I'm gonna save this, put it on the side. So opening this up, it looks like so in today's unboxing we have here pickled vegetables this one is 90 calories then we have here the vermicelli and then we have here more pickled vegetables i don't know what the difference is and then we have the tomato hot pot seasoning i don't think i'm gonna eat all the soup but you put all the food in here this one is the heating pack and then lastly we have the utensils underneath that there's nothing so let me see what's in this utensil. So they give us some napkins. And then we have here a spoon, as you can see. I don't know what this is. Is this like a toothpick? Oh, it's a toothpick. Damn, it looks like my table is messy right now. And then lastly, there's chopsticks. So you need to add it like that. <laughs> it's so hard. Damn, okay, it clicks like that. And then another one right here. Should I click, or I'm just weak, I need to go back to the gym. So these are the chopsticks that they give us. It says here, take out the upper white container. Got that. Add the vermicelli, pickled vegetables, and hot pot seasoning in that order. So let's go do that right now. 
So this is what's inside the plastic. This doesn't even look like that much. And if you know me, I eat a good amount. That's the noodles that they supplied. Next is the pickled vegetables. Does it matter which ones I put? It looks kind of weird, but but the maker of this, Heidi Lau, is a very top-notch hot pot spot. So they know what they're doing. So this is one part of the pickled vegetables. So you guys can get a good angle on that. And then here's more pickled vegetables. So it's just the same thing. Oh, it's just the same thing. Um, I wash my hands before this. And then the hot pot seasoning on top. Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna put everything in here so that it would taste good. So this is how it looks like overall before you add drinking water. I have my drinking water right here. I'm going to add water until that line. Okay. Now add cold water to the maximum line of the black container. So we have the cold water. The line doesn't look like it's that much. It's like this line right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Adding the water. All right, and we're good. Next step is to remove the heating packet. Don't know how to explain it, but this is probably what the people use when they're in the military or army. Place the heating packet inside the black container, but then after that, place the white container into the black container as soon as possible and fasten the seal. All right, so I'm gonna place this inside. I need a timer actually. Got my stopwatch ready and I'm gonna place this inside. I'm gonna press start and then it says here, put it on top as soon as possible, right? All right, so I'm gonna place this on top, cover it. All right, so now I'm gonna wait 15 minutes. I'm gonna be warming up the Vienna sausage probably towards a closer time of when everything is ready gonna pop open the soju and let's have a good time guys cheers YouTube if you guys are drinking too in your own home if you're over 21 in America I believe it's 19 in Canada but I don't know if I had that many Canadian um, subscribers Ooh. so it's been a minute and 25 seconds and now I hear noise I don't know if you got do you see that smoke Oh, dude, that's so that's pretty cool. So after 90 seconds, that happens. Let me see, what are some questions that I handpicked? I didn't organize these questions. They might be at a place like, I might have a question about music at like number five and then another one at number 70. I'm sorry about that. I didn't really organize these questions. So first question that I have, where am I from? I am from the San Francisco Bay Area. If you don't know where that is, it's in the northern part of California. It's six hours away from LA. So people that are from outside of California or that outside of America, you probably think that San Francisco and LA are pretty close together, but they are not. But I do live 50 minutes away from San Francisco. If you guys are wondering, I am holding a towel right here. This is for when I get messy, when I eat. Have I ever moved? It's pretty crazy. I've lived in this house my whole life. I have never moved. I never went out to go to college. I went to college about 15 or maybe even 12 minutes away from me. So number three, what is your favorite color? That changes. So a long time ago when I was younger, my favorite color was red then I went to navy blue for a long period of time and then recently I do still like blue but Olive probably takes over it right now what is your favorite food chicken wings number five what is your favorite time of the day my favorite time of the day is either morning time or golden hour morning time because I wake up probably around seven o'clock and I get my things done early and golden hour because everything looks really nice outside. What time do I sleep? I usually sleep around 11 or 12 o'clock every day. Next question, number seven, what time do you wake up? I usually wake up around six or 7 a.m. depending on my mood. I try to do six o'clock, but it's most likely seven o'clock. Next question, what is my birth month? My birth month is February. Favorite city, my favorite city in the whole wide world is San Francisco, mainly because I'm from this area and I have a lot of pride of where I'm from. Number 10, celebrity crush. My celebrity crush growing up was Hilary Duff. And then when she kissed Aaron Carter in that, I think it was that Christmas episode, I didn't like her anymore. And then after that, it was Vanessa Hudgens. But now, maybe Camila Mendez from Riverdale. But really, I don't think I have a celebrity crush right now. Do you like coffee? Yes. Do you like dogs? Yes. But for a long period of time in my life, I was scared of dogs. So story time. When I was probably about four to six years old, my parents were fixing the backyard fence, this side in particular. And then my neighbors had two really big dogs at that time. Not anymore. I don't 
I don't think they have any dogs right now. I think they have three cats, actually. But yeah, so my parents let me out in the backyard to play by myself. And they're usually caged, but at that time they weren't. So when I was in the backyard, the two dogs saw me and then they chased me and barked. Thank God they didn't bite me. And then I tried to run back inside um, of my house. It's a sliding door, but the sliding door was closed. So I was outside of my backyard crying. I don't know for how long, but the two dogs were barking at me. And ever since then, I was scared of dogs. I was just scared of them approaching me and making Maybe possibly biting me so I didn't want to get close to them I don't want them to be smelling me whenever they're like close to me I like I get hella scared and then my cousin her name is Jaja Janice she got mini Aussie toy toy size Aussie uh, Australian Shepherd she actually picked up um, the dog's name is Boba on my birthday I think this was 2015 and then ever since then I started playing with Boba and got used to a dog being around me and playing with me and then I decided like you know what why was I scared all that time? Now I'm planning to get a dog. I don't know what kind of dog I want, but I do want a small size dog in the very future. Pretty cool story, right? Number 13, what is your favorite subject? My favorite subject growing up was math. I just felt like it was really easy for me. And then they started adding letters and I'm just like, what? But math is still my favorite subject. What is the worst injury you ever had? Number 14. My worst, <laughs> my very worst injury that I ever had. Growing up, I never really got injured until I think I was like 19 or 20 years old. I was ice skating with a bunch of my cousins. So the ice skating rink that we went to, they were about to close and a lot of people were leaving the ice rink. I had a lot more space and I decided that I want to go fast. So I did. And then the very front of my ice skate, it dug into the ice. Ice, and then I fell and I landed on my elbow and then when I stood up I was like this the whole time and I couldn't move it I was like what the heck and then also I had a sleepover at my cousin's house that time so we went back to my cousin's place and then I slept like like this and then the very next morning I couldn't drive I just couldn't move my arm at all so I went home and I was like doing this the whole time and then when I got home my parents I told my parents like I can't move my arm like I it was like this kind of movement that I had. I couldn't move it anywhere else. So then I went to the, my local hospital. They did an x-ray scan and then they found that I had a small fracture on my elbow. And then they just told me that I just had to wait and heal. So I had a sling on me and then I couldn't move my arm for like a month. It was really hard to shower also. But even after that, I never had a fracture anywhere in my body, but yeah. Number 15, can I swim? No, I can't swim. That's pretty surprising, right? Number 16, what is your shoe size? US 12, but they are wide so I can wear 12 and a half and sometimes I do get size 13 because if you know after size 12 um, the halves are really rare so finding a 12 and a half is pretty hard to find number 17 how tall are you I'm 5 foot 11 what is your eye color brown what is your favorite number seven it's 14 minutes right now I'm gonna be warming up the Vienna sausage so that it times perfectly with this this is the Vienna sausage I'm gonna be opening up the hot pot right now all right, so this is how it looks like. I'll try to do a close-up for you guys. That should be a good angle, right? Adding this on top. It's probably gonna be really hot, so I'm gonna take off my jacket in a second. It kind of does look spicy, but hopefully it's not. All right, hopefully this is good. That's pretty good, it's not that spicy. It's not spicy at all, I think. Damn, this is super hot. Let me try some of these vegetables. Mmm, that's really good, honestly. So, it's not a question, or maybe I could add it as a question. How much did this hot pot cost? This hot pot cost $7.99, so it's very affordable. If you get a hot pot somewhere else, it's pretty expensive. Even if you get like a vegetable choice at, um, what's it called? Tasty Spot is about like $15 for hot pot. Sometimes there's places that's all you can eat hot pot, and that's like $29.99 over here. But most of the hot pot in my area, you have to pay for the meat, you have to pay for the soup base, and that could run you more than $30, so this is a very affordable choice. Wow. The vegetable in this is really good. Like there's some vegetables that I just don't like and I typically don't put vegetables in my hot pot, but wow, like, mmm. 
I was gonna say, if you could find a self-heating hot pot that's from Heidi Lau, definitely get that and try it. What is the best place that you ever traveled to? The best place that I ever traveled to, not to be biased, is the Philippines. More specifically, um, Boracay or Puerto Princesa. So if you guys don't know, Boracay is or was known as a party island. Um, I was actually one of the last people to experience the party island of Boracay. I went in March of 2018 and then they had a six month or a nine month renovation of the island because they had sewer problems, the ocean was really dirty, there was like plastic there was like poop feces on the beach um, the ro roads weren't really nice so during that six months or nine months of closure they fixed all of that and then afterwards they decided that they don't want to have people on the beach anymore so I actually don't know how it's been like in the past two years and then Puerto Princesa that was the very first time that I did island hopping and the water there was really nice compared to other places that I've been in the Philippines but really I've been to the Philippines probably four times in my life when I was four I think when I was 12 and 13 and then when I was 25? Yeah, I went when I was 25, like close to my birthday, or a week after my birthday. So it was my first time experiencing everything as an adult. Number 21, what's your favorite thing about your Model 3? So that is my car. My favorite thing about my Model 3 would probably be the center console. It's that screen in the very middle. It shows a map and then your music and then just everything. It shows your car on the far left side. And then when you're close to a car, it shows the car on the screen. So it's, it's pretty cool, honestly. And I do really like that it's an electric car. I save a lot of money on not spending on gas or fixing up my car, you know? Number 22, what is your profession? My profession is a data analyst so I'm in the tech world number 23 can I see your video yes you're watching it right now number 24 what is your favorite rock band damn I gotta say my favorite band growing up has been Linkin Park and then when I was in middle school I had like an indie phase so I would say two door cinema club right here two door cinema club uh, Phoenix is one of my favorite bands too which is not in the view of the camera which is right there I do listen to like a lot of genres except country. No offense to country, by the way. Tea or coffee? I always go with coffee. What is your McDonald's go-to order? My McDonald's go-to order, honestly, is a 20-piece nuggets with uh, large fries, no salt. And then for the sauce, I usually go with honey mustard or hot mustard. If you haven't already, definitely try out the hot mustard. I worked there for a year. I didn't try the hot mustard until my friend Oscar told me about it. And then ever since then, I always get that sauce. But before the 20 piece nugget thing, I usually get like the crispy chicken sandwich. Those are really good. Add a cheese on that. Ooh, darn, I have this question twice already. What's your all time favorite food, chicken wings? Number 28, do you like soccer? If so, which team? Unfortunately, I don't watch soccer, but I'm trying to familiarize myself with it. I do watch the four main American sports, which is baseball, basketball, American football, and hockey, but soccer, I don't, but I do want to know more about soccer because it's the number one world sport, or maybe even cricket, but I, d I don't know that many people that watch cricket. Number 29, who are your favorite small YouTubers? So out of the top of my head, I didn't really do that much research um, on who I watch right now, but I gotta give a shout out to my homeboy Joe Ratchet, Mulvi, M88ULV, uh, June Joseph, one of my favorite YouTubers. He knows that I really like his videos. Man, who else? There's a guy, um, Where's Wes? I'll have a link to each of the channels in the description below. There's honestly so many small YouTubers that I watch. If you see me comment on your videos, then you know that I definitely support you. Okay, so here's a couple more that I really like. Um, this one is Sesame Sprinkles, um, Christopher Yoon. And then there's this guy named David from uh, Hong Kong. I really like your guys' videos. There's a couple more, but like, I just can't think of you guys right now. So I'm definitely sorry if I don't give you guys a shout out. Um, number 30, there's so many questions. 100 questions is gonna take so long, but gonna do it for this video for my 100th video. Number 30, who are my favorite big YouTubers? Casey Neistat, Matthew Diavella, uh, Marquez Brownlee. I feel like I'm just naming like the main big YouTubers that a lot of people watch. How to Beast, he just got a million subscribers. He usually does bodybuilding, but it's just in a very entertaining way. Like you know what you're getting when you watch his videos. Like it's the same formula, but it's just really good. I just don't mind like listening to him, like whatever he talks about. Like I just, it's just a nice fun video to watch. Can you speak any other languages? No, um, Tagalog, I can understand, but I can't speak it. Spanish like very limited. I can't get by with it. Korean, just a little bit. Like I just know how to say like, hello. I know like mom and dad, um, appa, um, ama, uh, anasio. Um, just about 
that really. Let me see here. Favorite country. My favorite country, I would just say like region. It's the Nordic countries. That's a place that I want to live in the very end. I just feel like they're very way into the future compared to other countries in the world. And I just like how everything looks like there, nature wise, architecture wise. I saw that they're building like this big long freeway that connects all these islands together. So I think that's gonna be done in the 2020s. Um, I'm not too sure if it's actually close to being done, but that's really cool. And I feel like that would help their economy a lot since it's gonna connect all of these um, islands together. Greatest game of all time. I feel like this is gonna tie into my 42nd question right here on my list. Like what's my favorite video game? My favorite video game of all time is uh, Final Fantasy X. The storyline, the storytelling, the graphics at that time, like 2002, really good. There's also like this mini game called Blitzball in Final Fantasy X. I feel like that could have been its own standalone game, which was just really fun. Other than that, I played this MMORPG called RuneScape for the longest time. I got 99 runecrafting on that game, so that could tell you if you did play that game, how much I played. But yeah, let me see here. 34. Where do your parents descend from? My mom descended from a Luzon area. In particular, it's a place called Tarlock. And then to go even more into that, it's a small town called Anao. A-N-A-O. I have a YouTube video of that. And then my dad is from a city called Bacolod. That's kind of like a, a city that's really growing in the Philippines. But yeah, that's where my parents are from. Um, 35, I got a question. Um, they asked me Q&A for what from Instagram? Q&A for this video. Um, if you could live forever, what would you do? That is a really good question. And a question that um, I was asked when I was in fifth grade. So I remember my fifth grade teacher actually did ask that class this question and they told us, or she told us to uh, write a paper about it, like a paragraph. We were talking about the fountain of youth at that time. And my response was, if I could live forever, I would visit every small city in the whole wide world. Like I would, I would walk there because like, I just have so much time and I just don't have to worry about anything. So that's honestly something that would be really cool to do in this day of age, but darn, like that would be a really good ultimate goal. If I could do that as a YouTube niche, that would be honestly awesome. But uh, I don't know, that's gonna be really hard. I'd have to have a strong fan base to do that. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, share this channel with your friends. And yeah, um, the next question I have here is, where would you like to travel to next? I would like to travel Nordic country, uh, Southeast Asia, and maybe even Dubai. 38, if you could change your name, what would you change it to? I would change it to Roy. Um, if you guys know me, my first actual name is Gil, then there's a space, and then Roy, so it'd be kind of cool if my name was Roy. If you didn't have corgis, what dog breed would you have? That is a good question. It would honestly just be like a small breed, small medium-sized breed. A Shiba, I don't know if I would. I feel like they just have like a lot of energy and they bark a lot, but they are really cute and I like how they look, but other breeds, uh, I don't know. I, I really, I'm really not too sure. Number 40, who is your favorite NBA player at this time? I'm very biased, um, Darren Fox. I normally watch players that are centers because I'm 5'11 and I guess I'm relatively tall so I usually play like the tall person in the team so like I'm usually like the center I kind of watch centers in basketball because I want to learn from them see how their footwork is and see how they get to the basket and score so I kind of model my personal game based on centers in basketball but now it's changing and the tall people that are shooting threes now that's something I don't do I shoot mid-range though and I'm pretty good at it in my opinion but yeah um, I'm just pretty biased on um Sacramento Kings. Number 41, what has been your favorite YouTube video to film and edit? So on the top of my head, um, my favorite YouTube videos that I've created is my solo trip to a music festival at Camp Flockna. That was one of my first early videos. I thought that was gonna get a lot of hits, but it didn't. But that's honestly one of my favorite videos and one of my favorite memories um, of my life. Then next, I would say Austin, Texas. I thought that was really well put together, a really easy video to watch throughout. I just didn't have my camera to record towards the end. I used my phone, but it's, it's all good. Then my Dallas, Texas one was really good too. And then my Philippine series one is really good too. So definitely, if you guys haven't already, check those videos out. Uh, 42, my favorite video game, I already answered that, sorry. So 
43 um, celebrity or influencer that blocked you on social media so I mentioned this in my last video most famous person that blocked me on social media is Kid Kitty I believe um, I tweeted at him saying that his new music sucked and then afterwards I noticed that I wasn't seeing his tweets on my Twitter feed and then I was like huh so I went on his Twitter and it said that Kid Kitty blocked me so that's pretty funny Kid Kitty please unblock me maybe we should start that trend um, for Kid Kitty to unblock me on Twitter so maybe that'll be a recurring uh, thing on my future videos so next question number 44 who are the celebrities that you've met so I met a good amount of celebrities not to like brag or anything but I was listening to them out and they were mostly hip-hop artists so if you're not well aware of the hip-hop game then you probably don't know who I'm gonna name but I listed this out I didn't meet him but I shook Kanye West hand at the Yeezus tour in 2017 I was like on the railing I don't know if you guys can consider that as a celebrity that I met but I was on the railing at the concert and he was shaking people People's hand. I reached out my hand and then he shook it. I gotta say, his hand was pretty ashy. <laughs> But that's the closest I've ever gone to uh, meeting Kanye West. Then number two, I met or okay, guys, do shaking hands of celebrities at concerts count? Because I'm, I'm listing these out. But I shook Skrillex's hand at 1015 Folsom in San Francisco. It was like an after party for Jack U, which is a, a group that he created with uh, Diplo. You guys probably know the song "Where Are You Now." He made that at, as Jack U. I gotta say, guys, the food is still pretty warm after all this time. Next on my list, I put as a uh, Neff the Pharaoh, which is a local Bay Area rapper. I met him outside of 1015 Folsom. A uh, schoolboy Q. Now that one was really cool. So I knew that Top Dog Entertainment, which is Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, SZA, Isaiah, um, Rashad, a lot of more artists. I don't know if you guys really know who they are, but I knew that they were going to be in town because I had tickets to their concert. Um, I think it was on a Wednesday, but I was in San Francisco on a Monday. And then I knew that they had a concert in Portland on a Sunday. So I knew they were in town and I I was in San Francisco at the time because I wanted to uh, show my parents around. So I was just driving around and I decided to go to the main shopping center in San Francisco at Westfield. And as we were walking, I saw this big bus, like two buses. And I'm just like, is that them? So I didn't see anyone walk out at the time, but I saw inside the hotel, people were wearing the gear of the music label. So I was like, oh, they are staying here. So I didn't really want to wait because I didn't want my parents to like, you know, like what are you doing there and stuff. So and we went around the whole shopping center, Union Square in San Francisco, if you guys know where that area is. And then after all of that, I went back to the car, but I wanted to go to that side just in case if a celebrity comes out or from TDE, you know. And then to my surprise, I saw one of the bodyguards and I recognized him. It was like this tall black guy that's kind of old, but I recognize him from videos that I've seen. So I'm just like, huh, if there's a bodyguard there, that means one of the artists this is there. We were kind of walking down and then I was like, hey, um, to my parents, can you guys wait maybe five minutes just in case if a celebrity comes out because I see a bodyguard right there. So they agreed to it. And to my surprise, just one minute later on, I saw a schoolboy queue coming from the, the tour bus. No one was waiting outside of the hotel. I was like the only one there. So I had my phone out, I took like a Snapchat. The bodyguard told me to put my phone away, but I was kind of being nice about it. Um, I was kind of like, also like, I, I should I should shoot my shot and ask him if I could shake his hand because that's like my only time that I'll probably ever meet him in my life. So I asked him and then he turned around and then he shook my hand and I thought that was pretty dope. But you could tell in the video that I, that I, I made that he was pretty sleepy and tired from the tour bus because he went from Portland all the way to San Francisco in one day or a couple of just hours. So he was pretty tired, but I thought that was pretty cool. I also made Big Sean. I have a video of it on my YouTube channel, one of my earliest videos, but he had this album release in San Francisco for his album called uh, Hall of Fame. I think that was his second album. He put it on Twitter that he was going to be in the area and he wants to meet the fans. So I decided that I was going to go up to San Francisco. I went to the area and then he performed like two songs, shook his hand while he was performing. Um, I was like right in the very front. And then he went up the table um, and he, he wanted to meet every single fan there. I would say it's maybe like 500 or a thousand people in the area at that time. But there was like this homeless person as he was exiting from the DJ booth to handshake around everyone. And then as he was leaving, there was like a homeless person grabbing his chain. And at first, Big Sean was cool, but then he didn't know what was going on. And then the, the homeless person kept grabbing the chain and wanting to get his chain. And then the bodyguard saw that they 
pushed the guy away and then they brought Big Sean to the store where he was uh, sponsored by and I, di I didn't get to like personally say hi, what's up to him. Um, if you guys know Outkast, the Atlanta group, hip hop group, they headline Coachella, so they're pretty big. So I met Big Boy from Outkast because he was performing at um, Outside Lands and he had a surprise set in the middle of the crowd. Um, I went, I was in the side. It's, there's a video of it on YouTube also, so check it out. But yeah, I, I just extended my hand, shook his hand. I thought it was pretty dope. Um, who else do I have here? Haji Beats from Odd Future. He performed or he opened up for Bad Bad Not Good in Santa Cruz. So he was saying what's up to the fans. And toward, after his set, I went to the back and then I just said what's up to him. He was really cool. I think he was um, pretty buzzed. He was definitely not sober. But what I thought was really cool was I introduced myself. I said my name was Gil. We exchanged a chat for like maybe a minute and as I left he was like hey it was nice to meet you Gil I thought it was pretty dope that he remembered my name because he was a, a celebrity you know or like just a, an artist so I thought it was cool that he remembered my name because personally for me I forget names pretty easily so I don't know um, that that was just really cool and finally no I actually have two more on my list boss BAS He's part of a J. Cole's a label called Dreamville. He opened up for J. Cole in 2015 for the 2014 Forest Hills Drive Tour. He was just randomly walking and I, I knew how he looked like. This is before he dropped any albums. He just had like features and stuff. But yeah, um, I saw him walking around and I was just like, what the hell? And I said, what's up to him? And then there was like two other people that said, what's up to him? He wasn't really that big at that time. It's only if you like really knew that the label. So, and I told him like, hey man, like I arrived here late. I didn't see your opening set. Parking was was really bad outside please come up again soon and he was like ah oh, man for sure man it's all good like i'll come to bay uh, pretty soon it was a really cool experience and then finally i met a uh, little b the bass god he's in a hip-hop group called the pack and they're well known for the song vans so if you know the song vans he's he was part of that group and he's kind of a meme person so he was at um the san jose earthquakes game and i saw him after the game and i said what's up to him i even have like a video of, him, of me and him and we're talking on my story so yeah what's up man it's on little b what's up man do it big man little b we in the building hey those are the celebrities that I've met. Next question. 45, what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time is Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, and Boyhood. What is your astrology sign? I'm a Pisces. Are you into astrology? No, I'm not. Chicken wings or chicken nuggets? Uh, chicken wings all the way. And more specifically, chicken wing flats. Cats or dogs? I don't know if that was already asked that, but dogs, but uh, cats are cool. Uh, text or call. Honestly, I prefer texting. I will respond back to you when I'm free. And I feel like when you call, I might be with like a person. I might be busy. I might be at work. And I could be out with friends. Um, I could be at a party and it's gonna be hard to hear. Maybe you're at a club and it's hard to hear. And also the people around me can hear our conversation. So personally, I don't like phone calls, but if I'm free, no one's around me, it's quiet then I'm down to like, have a call. Uh, Pepsi or Coke. So funny thing is that my dad worked for Pepsi. Uh, I forgot how long, maybe 10 years when he was in the Philippines. He was the operator creating the soda. So so ever since then, my dad's been biased for PepsiCo products. So I should have like a photo maybe right here of what PepsiCo products are like. But overall, I gotta say, I do like Coca-Cola more. I like Sprite and Sprite is a Coca-Cola brand, so yeah. <laughs> but not going to lie to you guys, if I had to pick like Pepsi or Coca-Cola, I would pick Diet Coca-Cola. But normally growing up, I was not exposed to um, soda in my household. Like it would only be at family parties. Uh, what is your favorite soda? My favorite soda is Sprite. Number 53, what is your favorite season? My favorite season of all time is fall easily. It's just that I feel like the temperature is right. I feel like I can actually dress. It's not hot, it's not cold. There's just a certain mood at the time of day when it's fall. I just don't like it when it's daylight savings here in America or just in the West Coast. I don't know how it's like in other places in the world, but that's like the only thing I don't like about fall. The leaves, the changing color of the leaves, it's just, it's just really nice. It's just a mood, you know? What is your favorite social media? So I would say my favorite social media is Instagram due to the story and the um, direct message function on Instagram it's really easy to get up-to-date news of what's going on with my friends 
uh, with my family and I don't really like get that with other social medias. Twitter would probably be my next favorite um, app as you get like news like as soon as possible for like local, um, worldwide news or even like sports news. And also I, I could randomly speak what's going on in my mind. But yeah, TikTok is really my number one application. It's really funny. I spend a lot of time on there, but like I try my best to not go on the app because I'm really sucked in whenever I go. Like I get stuck on the app for like 30 to 60 minutes. But recently there have been times where I just go on the app maybe once a week. Um, I try maybe three or four times a week. I don't try to go on there every day. Nike or Adidas. Hard choice. I I do like the classic look of Adidas, like the track suit jackets. Their soccer Tyro pants are really nice and comfortable. I feel like they're very stylish too. And I'm also a big fan of Kanye West, obviously. And he makes really good quality shoes for uh, Adidas. But I do like the Nike logo and the products that they create are Really high quality in my opinion. What is your last concert? The very last concert that I went to was Major Lazer. I created that video maybe three videos ago. Um, it was a drive-in concert, but for that, I went to uh, a rave in San Francisco um, in February. And before that, I don't even know what was my last concert. Next question ties into that. What is your favorite concert? I gotta say, it is a tough choice. But I did list here six concerts that really stood out for me um, in no particular order. Jack U After Party at 1015 Folsom. So at that concert, they had a set time, a specific set time of 12.30 to 1.30. Just making sure my video is recording right now. If you guys don't know already, um, Jack U comprises of two EDM artists, um, Skrillex and Diplo. And they played a really, really long set at 10.15 Folsom to play. And they even had some surprise guests to join them in DJing. Kurt from Flossodramas and um, Anna Leno. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. But yeah, as I mentioned, that set was supposed to be from 12.30 to 1.30 but it actually ended at 4 a.m. from what I remember. I was so tired that I went to my car to like kind of nap, but I had a couple of friends that did stay inside. So, so from what I remember, Diplo left around 1.45. I didn't really recognize it until one of the DJ artists mentioned it, and it was probably 10 minutes before that he announced that. But Skrillex, man, he kept going and he kept wanting to DJ. It was, it was so wild. So I'm pretty sure if you want to DJ longer than what your original set is, the artist has to pay for staying in longer. So I really appreciate Skrillex for doing that. Uh, Kanye West, more specifically the St. Pablo tour in 2016. Honestly, consistent hits. And I had floor seats at that time. And when I was there, Kanye West was facing towards my side. So if you know how his tour setup was like on the stage, it's a floating stage that moved like backwards and like tilted and stuff. So whenever he was moving, he was facing my side of the stage. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I met Kevin Durant <laughs> at that concert and I took a photo with him um, on the floor um, when the concert was ending. So he was trying to leave. And from what I remember, a lot of people were yelling and had like their lights on in a certain direction. It was kind of close to me and I was confused. I was like, oh, why is why is there hella lights there? Then I saw a tall, like six foot 11 guy there and I was just like, oh shoot, that's Kevin Durant. And he was walking towards me and I was like, oh man, I gotta get my phone. I um, turned around, did selfie, and then I was like, hey. Um, I also listed EDC. I went two times, 2016 and 2017. I gotta say, it's just a straight up party the whole time. It's just so fun, good vibes, everyone is so nice, no judgmental person. Um, there and it's just it's just a vibe then i listed out outside lands 2016 that lineup was just so good like i should have a photo of the lineup right here second sky 2019 that is porter robinson's uh own music festival and skrillex was a surprise guest so it's it's up there for me and lastly camp vlog 2018 as i mentioned before i did a solo trip down to la to check this concert out and it's one of my favorite experiences of my life oh i mean actually it brings me to my next question have you ever gone to a concert by yourself i went to two concerts by myself my very first one was nickelback here in mountain view california and camp Flogna. i made a vlog out of this one of my all-time favorite videos that i ever created and it only has i think 300 to 400 views so please 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 check it out if you haven't already very underrated vlog and i'm kind of thinking about re-uploading it so that more people could watch it and yeah i mean just a quick recap i flew to la by myself i rented a car i went to the beach checked it 
it out. It was my first time actually using an electric scooter. Went up, met up with one of my RuneScape friends in downtown LA, checked into my Airbnb, then I went to the concert, repeat that for the next day. And I actually met up with someone that I was talking to on Reddit. It was his, uh, he was going solo to the concert too. And I just decided like, hey, let's let's go hang out. If, if you want to, if you want to ditch me, it, it's cool. You can do your own thing. We can just meet up for like a couple sets. And yeah, just down to make more friends. But my only regret of Camp Flogna was waiting in line for merch. If you guys told me or if they told me that there was going to be merch the day after the concert, then I would have just done that instead. I wasted a like couple of hours just waiting for merch and I didn't see some of the artists that I really wanted to see so that's something that I do regret. My next question 59 pineapple on pizza yes favorite sport tie between basketball and baseball first major or professional sports game my first professional sports game was in 2002 my dad brought me to the historic 20 game winning streak of the Oakland A's. At that time, it was the 18th game winning streak. So the Oakland A's won 17 games in a row. And then my dad decided, oh, let's go check out this historic event that's going on. We don't know when it's going to end. So I remember it very clearly. Like I went to the game, we bought the tickets. And as I was walking towards field, my eyes, they were just like, wow, this is so amazing. Just the clear cut grass, the professional players playing on the field, the people in the stands, it was just something that I've never seen before. Ever since that day, I've loved baseball. Also in that game, it was it was a last second game winner. I think it was Miguel Tejada. He hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth inning to win the game and to extend the winning streak to 18 games. And also, there's a movie about this called Moneyball starring Jonah Hill and Brad Pitt. So I think that it's pretty cool that I experienced this in person so and that's just how big this movie was starring brad pitt and jonah hill uh let me see what i have here when did i start watching sports i would say that i really started watching sports in 2002 but i did randomly watch sports on tv or whenever like like super bowl parties with my family fondly remember uh watching michael jordan on tv and i do have some recordings on vhs tape of his nba finals games but yeah 2002 2003 that's when i really dove into sports i bought sports video games like Madden, NBA Live, and uh, MVP Baseball by EA Sports. So I was a really big EA Sports guy, but honestly 2K makes better sports games. From there, it helped me understand who was really good in the sport, from the ratings of each player, and also how the game was played. So. I really, I'm really happy that I did that when I was nine, 10 years old. Uh, favorite sports teams, if you guys don't know already, it's mainly the Sacramento Kings for basketball and the San Francisco Giants for baseball. But I do support other Bay Area and Northern California teams. I really take a lot of pride into that. For college basketball, I do like the University of Kentucky. And for football, I stay local and I go to Stanford University. But I would like to invest some time in understanding the University of Texas since I'm planning to move there in the future. And that brings me to my next question. Where would you like to move to? I am planning to move to Austin, Texas in the future. And my next question is not related at all. How would you like to pass away? For all, I mean, first things first. I don't like the word die, dying, died. I prefer that we use passing away. But yeah, um, honestly, I would like to do it in a way where I could say goodbye to people. I don't know if it would be like, well honestly it would be like my age, but I just don't want it to be where I'm in a spot where I'm suffering. I have asthma, I feel like when I'm older it's gonna be really hard for me to breathe and I'm kind of scared for that moment, so crossing my fingers that that doesn't happen. Number 66, um, this is a long video, I don't even know how long this has been uh, so far, but if you made it this far, Thank you guys so much. It's two thirds of the way. What are your favorite hobbies? My favorite hobbies are, well, sports, playing basketball. I used to play basketball at the gym like almost every day before COVID happened, but I wouldn't say I'm that good. Like I'm just a good uh, role player, a good facilitator, a good person that's calling out like, oh, there's a person right here. I think I'm a good defender, um, but mostly I'm not really a good scorer. I'm not a good ball handler. Um, I'm good at the mid range. I'm good at posting up if I really want to, but most of the time people are bigger than me when I'm playing basketball. Like I remember this one time um, I was in a league in my college and I had to defend a 6'6 foot guy because I was the tallest person on my team and I personally, I just don't like that. But other things that um, are my hobbies, I like construction a lot. I'm going to make a video of that in the very future, very near future, sorry. 
but but yeah I just like seeing like, a city grow and a skyline because when people visit that city that's what they mostly see and that's how they like that's how they remember it so if you think about San Francisco you think about the Golden Gate Bridge the Bay Bridge now the Salesforce Tower if you go to Hong Kong then you see how the skyline's like um what else is that um I think Shanghai um I, I really forgot the city but it's in China and this skyline with all the LED lights it just makes it look a lot nicer but then when you think of San Jose you, you, it's just what what is in San Jose how does it look like you mainly look at the skyline or if there's any main attractions there and I feel like we don't really have that um, we have a short skyline because downtown San Jose is right next to the airport and you can't have tall buildings right next to an airport obviously Cheers guys if you made it this far. Cardio or lifting weights? I gotta say I like cardio more but I do want to gain muscle. I was pretty good about it last year. What's my favorite fruit? I like mango. Would you rather have six sons or six daughters? That is a tough question because I am Gil the third. If you guys didn't know that so I want to have a son so that I could so that there would be a fourth Gil in this world but I would love to have daughters. But honestly, if I do have a son, I'm hoping that he gets taller than me and he could probably do a professional sport. So my grandfather, he was 5'3", and then my dad, he's 5'7", so that's four inches apart, and I'm 5'11", so I'm hoping that my kid would be 6'3". So, I mean, we'll see in the future. How many kids would you want? I would like to have two kids minimum, but three is ideal. I'm an only child and I just feel like it'd be a lot better if I have someone to talk to in this household, someone that I could relate to, even if they're like 10 years older, just someone that I could reach out for, for some like guidance. And actually, this might be kind of deep. Um, I hope you guys don't feel sorry for me, but I'm actually the second child. I used to have an older sister, but she passed away. What's it called? Um, I, for, I can't think about the word right now. When you have a baby in your stomach, but then the baby didn't make it. So I had an older sister there. And then after, right after that, my parents tried to make a kid again and here I am. But honestly, it would be pretty cool if she was still alive and I could like reach out to her. But maybe if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be here. So I gotta be grateful for that. 71. Would you rather fight 10 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? I don't know why someone would ask me this kind of question, but I'd probably fight um, 10 duck-sized horses. What is my pokey order? I mostly get everything except for like the hot stuff. For the type of meat, protein, I usually go with all salmon, but I do like spicy tuna too. Spicy tuna is pretty good. It's gotta have crab meat. It's gotta have spicy mayo. It's gotta have seaweed salad. What else? Um, edamame, masago. What else is in the poke bowl? Um, that's all I could think about so far. What is my MBTI personality? Um, the way I remember it, I was talking to someone before and then there were like eggs, nachos, fries, potatoes. So ENF. He, that, that's what I that's what I am so I'm I wouldn't really consider myself extroverted maybe based on what you guys see through this, these lens that I'm extroverted but truly I'm an introvert over time I'm trying to put myself out there and gain some more know more people I guess I'm introverted because I'm an only child I'm mostly by myself here so and growing up I didn't really interact with other people other than like my runescape friends and stuff but and I'm also my cousins my cousins I would kind of consider my siblings because they're the same age range as me and I mostly hung out with them like every weekend growing up. Let me actually look this up so I can remember what everything means. Intuitive, okay, so I'm focused on ideas and concepts, I guess content creating. Feelings, I prioritize people and emotions. I would honestly say so, so if you're like my YouTube friend, then you would see that I watch your videos and comment. So I'm a really, uh, I would consider myself a person that's really supporting of other people and what they do. I mean, that's what I think. You guys could think otherwise, but but yeah, and uh, perceiving, prefer freedom and flexibility. So I mean like, I don't know, like I, f I forgot what perceiving meant. So I didn't really dig into this uh, personality test, but that's how I remember it. Eggs, nachos, fries, potatoes. Am I an early bird or a night owl? I would consider myself an early bird. Like I said earlier in this video, I sleep probably around 11 to 12. I don't sleep at like 4 a.m. or 2 a.m. And I prefer to wake up at six to seven o'clock. Where do I shop? I usually shop my clothes at Zara. Sometimes Uniqlo, those are my two main stores that I buy my stuff. Number 76, what is your favorite Pokemon? My favorite Pokemon growing up was Dragonite and Snorlax is up there for me. But the funny story was when I was younger, I used to play Pokemon with my cousin Patrick. We used to do battles and stuff. I actually had like three Dragonites. 
um, in my starting six. So when my cousin played me and he saw my Dragonite and he killed one, I remember he was so happy just killing the first one. And then I threw out another Dragonite and then he was like, what? And then he had to kill it again. It was, it was just so funny. Um, I, I prefer dragon types in Pokemon. I forgot my last Pokemon game. It was probably black and white. So I don't know all these new Pokemons out there. And I kind of barely fondly remember what happened in black and white. What is your favorite coffee order? I usually like a Vietnamese coffee. I like, like lattes. From Phil's, I usually get the ecstatic, sweet and creamy, light ice. Yeah, that's my go-to, but I'm down to drink just plain black coffee without any cream because I don't really like adding sugar into my body. I'm not diabetic or anything, but it's just like, that's just something I uh, don't want to do. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? The first thing I do when I wake up, I usually, I mean, I, I let my dogs out to pee. I feed them. I do a morning routine actually, like my skincare and stuff. Another future video that I'll do. And yeah, and then I mostly like chill maybe from eight to nine o'clock and just surfing the internet. Sometimes I do log into work really early just so I could get my day started and yeah. What is on your bucket list? I used to have a good list on my bucket list, but I don't know where it is now and I can't really think about um, what I want to do. Oh, there's there's one thing that I think that's pretty cool that I just thought of. Like, you know how I mentioned that if you live forever that you would visit every single town? Well, I want to do it in a smaller scale and I want to visit every single Bay Area city and maybe even create a video about it. So I was thinking about like droning the city and just exploring, exploring the main side and maybe even some smaller stuff like a local park so I think that's a pretty cool idea that I'll do in the future I don't know how old I'll be when I do that and I hope I don't think it's weird if I do that when I'm in my 50s but that's something that I want to do do I have any tattoos currently I do not have any tattoos number 82 would you get a tattoo yes I would get a tattoo I would get a tattoo right here it would be the good music label I would have a photo maybe right here of how it looks like. It would be pretty small. I've been wanting to have this for a long time. Soon, I'll have it soon. I just want a, a small one on my wrist. I think that's pretty dope. Can you play an instrument? Not really, but I grew up and I had like three months or maybe, yeah, three months of piano lessons and I learned the guitar, but like I only know how to play like two songs and that was like in high school. So other than that, no, I don't know how to play an instrument. Um, what are life experience that you missed out on? A uh, life experience that I missed out on that I feel is dorming or just living on campus or near campus during college. I, like I said earlier, I live 12, 15 minutes away from my college down in San Jose State University. So it, I think it would have been pretty cool because that way I would get to know more people. I would get to connect with other people and just understand and fend for myself, you know? So I really wish that I did do the dorm life. Not at San Jose State, but maybe if I went to a different college. Let me see here. What age would you like to live to? I mean, I don't know. If I if I could be functional at like 100 or 110, that would be pretty dope. I don't know how it's gonna be like now because technology for uh, medical stuff is getting a lot better. So I'm not too sure if what they said, like my life expectancy for my age, I forgot what it was. Maybe it's 75, 70, uh, I don't know, 73 or 77. Not, range. I don't know if that's accurate since technology has been evolving over time. So I would love to live at a hundred. That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty dope. And then thinking about like my grandparents, uh, what brings meaning into your life? Seeing people happy. Honestly, that's what makes me pretty happy. Supporting other people and in, in their craft, like maybe they want to do content creating and they're trying out this thing that it's not normal. So it's like very risky. And I don't know. I'm just like, I like supporting that. What are the healthiest and unhealthiest periods of your life? I think this is a really good question that I found online. So if you guys don't know already, I actually lost 20 pounds five different times in my life. I think if I'm really dedicated and I really want to do it, I, I can do it pretty easily. And I did actually do it this year. I think like June to July, I lost 18 pounds from 198 to 180. But currently I gained 12 pounds back and I'm currently at like 192 so I gain I gain weight pretty easily I'm I can eat I mean there's no more food in here really there's like no noodles it's just all vegetables so I'll throw this out but yeah let me see here um what did I put here the healthiest that I was ever in my whole lifetime early to mid 2019 just last year that time I was roughly around 170 pounds I'm at 192 right now 
I had muscle. I had a two pack going on. I had definition in my arms. That was just the best time of my life, fitness wise. From what I remember, I usually drop from 180 pounds to 160 pounds. And I did this when I was 15, 21, 23. I forgot what other age. And then this year, maybe 25. But yeah, what do you like most about where you live? I like that I'm from a really small town here in the Bay Area. It's not too big and I understand and know how our community is like. And I lived here my whole life, so I think that's pretty cool. We have only like two freeway exits from what I know of, maybe three freeway exits. So it's not that big if you guys know where I'm from. What is your first job? My first job was McDonald's. I worked there from August 2010 all the way till August 2011. So one full year. What did you like about McDonald's? I think that was really cool. When I was like in elementary school, School, I really wanted to be like a cashier at McDonald's so I made that happen and I think it's just I just think it's just really cool you know um, what did you learn at working from McDonald's I learned that the rush hour is from 4 to 7 on the clock and I didn't know that there's like mystery shoppers so usually they hire people like random people to go to McDonald's order a certain type of meal and they will grade you and your store how you made the food and how long it took so I didn't know that was a thing until I was working at McDonald's. Maybe you guys didn't even know that right now. But you, if you are a mystery shopper, then McDonald's will pay for your meal and pay you like maybe minimum wage for the service that you did. And it doesn't only happen to McDonald's, it happens to like retail stores also. Also, if you guys want fresh french fries, probably from any fast food restaurant, tell them no salt. And then afterwards, just put salt at home and then you have freshly made fries because the fries that are like probably sitting there for, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes, maybe even longer. Like if no one's really been buying fries, that's just been there, you know, it's kind of cold. It's not really warm. So if you want fresh fries, they will make you fresh fries. If you say no salt, that's something I learned from McDonald's and I want to pass that information on to more people. What is the favorite company that you worked for? Honestly, I gotta say McDonald's was pretty fun except for when they put me on drive through and sometimes I just can't understand people on the headset. Also, I kind of wanted to add this thing. I mean, it's a pretty long video, so if you made this so far, thank you again. When you order food that has a drive through other people will listen to you other than the person that's taking your order. People that are making the sandwiches, people that are probably making the drinks at Starbucks, uh, people that are giving you the food, they have headsets on too, so multiple people can hear you, not only just one person. Just letting you guys know. Also, if you really know me, then you already know the answer. I really loved working at Salesforce top-notch company it was really nice i worked in downtown san francisco in the area where the tallest building is and i actually did work in the tallest building in san francisco which is at 1070 feet tall so they had really good snacks the layout for the teams um, the way that I was set up was there was people working here, people working here, and then there was a centralized kitchen. There was probably uh, cupboards right here where you have like your, lo your own locker, um, then elevators in the very middle. Um, then they have like free food on the very top, a personalized chef. They had a personalized cafe in each of the buildings that they have. So you get free coffee every day. You could, you could pour your own cold brew. They have refrigerators in almost every floor. Free food, you could have like, you could have free cereal, free boiled eggs, free guacamole. Damn, I can't really remember what else they had there. So also they had this vending machine of technology where you could get anything you want, but it's just like once per quarter, I think, or per uh, month. And I got like a free keyboard, a free mouse, I think. Um, You know those chargers for your MacBook? They gave those out for free. That one was what most people really wanted to get. And then my coworkers, they were like mostly my age and I felt like I really connected with them. Sometimes I do hang out with them. I don't know, it's just, it was a really good vibe when I was working there. Number 93, are you patient? I am very patient. Number 94, do you like scary movies? No, I don't like scary movies. Number 95, favorite time of the day? I already answered this question earlier in this video. Do you like being an only child? I mean, there's pros and cons. I guess the pros is like, I don't have to get annoyed by another person. I could play my music as loud as I want, but I do wish I had someone to interact with on a daily basis maybe that's blood related to me like 100%. 
met uh, get to know them more we probably go to the same high school middle school so we would have like maybe the same group of friends and know what's going on but I didn't really have that one of the saddest things in my opinion was going to like theme parks so yeah my parents had me when they were in their 40s whenever we went to a theme park like Disneyland or Six Flags and I wanted to ride the rides they didn't want to ride with me so I had to go by myself they're really slow walkers I walk pretty fast whenever we go on vacation they don't want to do the fun exploring things like I said they can't really walk that much so whenever I wanted to see like a certain site then I can't really see it because they don't want to hike or they don't want to walk there I feel like if I had that sibling that was around my age I mean even in like 10 years older like they would hang out with me and do all of these things but I mean unfortunately I did not experience that in my life do you believe in ghosts kind of not really but more mostly I don't believe in ghosts what movie have you watched repeatedly back to the future Forrest Gump 2 and number 100 have you want something cool story so when I was in seventh grade or going into eighth grade I went to this cruise with my parents so we went from Long Beach California and then we went to Mexico so in that cruise ship we had like bingo night it's like $20 to get into the bingo night and I just decided like what else is there to do as an eighth grader so I played the very first bingo game there was like a good amount of people playing we were like in the theater so I played bingo and then to my surprise I won I think it was $600 that was like the first time that I won something like really big in my life and wow I don't know it was just it was really cool to do it as a kid but yeah that is my 100th video here on YouTube if you made it this far thank you so much I really appreciate you please leave a comment below if you made it this far so that I could thank you in a comment maybe even a DM on Instagram thank you for spending I mean more than a couple of minutes of your day with me today seriously means so much stay tuned hit that subscribe button share my channel with your friends and until next time, YouTube, stay gold. Thank you so much again. Peace out.